Are you ready to move beyond sin and into deliverance in your life? Welcome to the Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. This week, we are in 1 Samuel chapter 12, a great chapter. I've titled this, God is Faithful When We Are Not. So in the story of chapter 12, Samuel is giving his big farewell address. He has just explained to the nation that their request for a king was evil and wicked. <laughs> As a confirmation, he called on a storm and it rained down on all of them. In shock, the people responded in fear. And here's what Samuel says next in verses 20 through 23. And Samuel said to the people, do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, <laughs> yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and right way. So Samuel's exhortation to the people here is fourfold. First, he says, stop giving yourself to fear. Second, he says, you have been sinful. Third, he says, do not repeat this sin. And then fourth, dedicate yourself wholly and completely to the Lord. Now, all this exhortation might seem like a very cold and calculated and unempathetic counsel, but really it isn't. Fear is actually what got Israel into this sinful mess. <laughs> they were fearful of other nations, so they wanted a king like other nations. And at this point, adding more fear to the situation would only complicate and lead to more of the same. So Samuel's trying to get them to kind of snap out of this moment. You know, I have seen many believers act this way when confronted by their sin. They suddenly realize their sin and all the consequences and effects of their sin. Then instead of embracing the truth about themselves and the situation and moving through the experience, they fabricate all these untrue ideas and images about the situation that take them into an unhealthy place. Fear then takes over and their reasoning is hijacked by irrational ideas not based in reality. Therefore, they are drawn further into sin. Now, this is precisely why so many get stuck in repetitive cycles of sin in this life. They realize their sin, but have a very unhealthy view of it and response to it that keeps them moving from moving beyond the issues and rededicating themselves wholly and completely to the Lord. Now, right here is where Samuel speaks some grounded truth to the nation. He tells them two things. One is a stop and the other is a start. First, stop turning aside empty things that cannot profit or deliver. Second, start giving yourself wholly and completely to God who does profit your nation and is your only deliverer. But it's the reasoning behind this start and stop that is so profound. You see, something bigger was at stake than the nation's well-being. It was the name of the Lord. The Lord had committed himself to them and for his great namesake, he was not about to abandon the nation if they would turn from their sin. God's name, his covenant, and his grace were greater than all their sin. This profound and almost unreasonable thought anchors all our faith in moments of sin. God's name, his covenant, and his grace are greater than all your sins. God does profit and deliver but we have to believe in and surrender to his name, trust in his covenant promises, and accept what appears to be his unreasonable grace. So, if you have been having trouble moving through your sin, maybe it's time to accept God's grace that will pardon and cleanse within his grace that is greater than all your sin. I love you guys. I pray this has really blessed you today, maybe even freed you. And with that, I'll see you right back here again.